from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the COB on this Thursday afternoon. I'm Nadine Blaney. And I'm Juliette Sarli on a day where, again, Nadine, we are seeing records. We broke through 8,100 on the ASX 200 earlier today. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to close at the highest level, but certainly the first time we've seen that index through that. It's all this optimism with, um, you know, we've been talking about the pivot party and the cuts for a year now, but it does look like j Powell kind of signaled that overnight. And then the positive news, of course, on the back of the fact that our inflation picture yesterday indicated it's not likely we'll see an RBA hike. I think that as well, you know, commodities are so such a weight or a boon to our market. And we have seen oil prices rising. We did see iron ore up through the overnight period on some strong, strong, well, demand that Rio Tinto is indicating coming from the big Chinese economy. So yeah, everything seemed to be working in this local market's favor. So topping that 8100 level. So sear that in your mind that will become the sort of next psychological level that we'll be talking about, you know, moving up or down. Yeah, from. and that was, I mean, AMP's forecast for the end of the year. So what happens now? Does that just mean that we're range bound? Do people sort of trim during reporting season? Do we revisit this level again in December? Who knows? But um, certainly at those highs at the moment. Yeah, and we do know that a lot will have to do with rates, not just here. Of course, we're questioning what's happening for the RBA next week. Now, UBS for one, says that they are sticking with their non-consensus view that we will have to see a hike. Why? Well, they say that inflation, uh, just based on their forecasts, require a hike. And they note that a lot of other consensus expectations for inflation are coming in line with their you know, forecasts. So they're saying, what, like, why wouldn't the RBA hike if inflation targeting is the name of the game? But we will find out. All right, and the other big move is, you know, you talked about the global tech surge that's really mm -hmm. flowed through into Asia. But when you see the yen rise, particularly as much as it has in the back of the BOJ hike, well, the Nikkei then goes down. So the Nikkei is down 2.5%, very much, um, I guess, against what else you're seeing in terms of momentum in Asia because the CSI has looked pretty good, the Chinese blue chip stocks. We've also been seeing the Taiwanese market look quite good. It's up by about 2%. Um, but that weighing of, or the weight, I should say, of the stronger yen just weighing on the overall Nikkei. Yep, so very big week. We're through most of it. Of course, we still do have results in the U.S., but we'll get there in just a moment. Let's take a look at the sectors of the day. And I think it goes without saying that some of those interest rate sensitive sectors of the market did particularly well. Next DC, you can see on your screen there, or I'll tell you if you're listening, up by 2.15%. Technology one up by 2.5%. It did get an upgrade coming from RBC Capital Markets yesterday in the wake of its investor day, which all the reading I've been done has been very well received. All right, having a look at the miners there, a much better day. There was a Noel Pearson, Indigenous leader, very well known, added to the Fortescue board as well. I don't oh, think that's no, behind the that. oh, share price move, but um, certainly coming back after that big block trade. And of course, energy is where it's at. Um, RBC now saying there's a chance of a wider war in the Middle East with uh, a lot of concern that there will be revenge on Israel following the killing of the Hamas leader in Iran. Corporate stories, of course, today, not really dominant. We're in a little bit of a lull, you could say, before we get to you know, the thick of reporting season. Next week, we have Temple and Webster, we have Satire, um, but it really heats up the week following that. We're working like little machines behind the scenes here to make sure we get you the best reporting season coverage. In fact, if you go to our website, we've got a whole special rail, as they call it, that's just all reporting season, pre-season analysis. Anyways, I always get I always get sidetracked. Um, there's that story about Noel Pearson joining the Fortescue board as non-executive director. And we had the payment provider Findi having a bit of a, a shocker of a day, 6.4% uh, on the back of its numbers. It's also declined to outline profit expectations for the year, so that will do it. Yeah, that came up in um, one of the investor events that we held yesterday, just that the market will probably not look very, very favorably on companies that do not provide guidance or detail in their outlook this year. So Findi, take note. And uh, Star Entertainment, after a good day yesterday, dropped during trade after a confidential submission to the ongoing inquiry said the company is not suitable to hold its license. Revira though, looking pretty good. It's going to return $75.3 million to shareholders. Drone Shield cap raising was announced yesterday and it did wrap it up, but it uh, suffered off the back of that. 
greatly, off by 15% by the end of the session. And let's get now to our guest, Isaiah El Shabini from Macro Capital joining us. Isaiah, it's just really this, I guess, risk on momentum. Cuts are coming. Yeah, exactly. That's and thank you for both having me on again today. Now, I just wanted to start off by reiterating what you both were just mentioning as the fact that yesterday, you know, the Australian share market had its best day since 2022. Now, obviously, after the quarterly inflation data tempered the expectations of that RBA rate rise. So the ASX did jump 139 points or 1.8 percent to a fresh record of 8,092 at the closing bell. And we saw all 11 sectors finishing in the green. Now, that was the biggest percentage increase since November. 2022 and the all odds also rose by 1.8%. Now, the data that was released near midday yesterday showed that the CPI inflation has cooled to 3.8%, and the result was perfectly in line with the consensus expectation. So according to the RBA rate tracker, the CPA data completely shifted the market sentiment from that 25% chance of a rate hike pre-data release to a 95% chance of no change or even a 5% chance of a 25 basis point cut. Now, the rate-sensitive banks and real estate stocks have risen following the news, with CBA briefly extending above $138 a share for the first time in its history at the open of trading before paring back. So the consumer, consumer discretionary stocks, uh, Nadine, I know you and I were both talking about Super Retail Group when I was on on Thursday. Uh, they've been performing quite well, and the sector has been climbing by 2.3%. Uh, as you can see there on the chart, that's Super Retail Group. Uh, and West Farmers has also advanced 2.8% to $73.65. JB Hi-Fi firmed 4.3%, and Harvey Norman jumped 5.3%. Now, the big four banks also jumped paced by Commonwealth Bank, who shot past BHP to become the country's most valuable publicly listed company. Uh, the lenders market also, the market cap, sorry, also hit a record high of 230 million on Wednesday after rallying 1.1% to 137.49. So the Fed meeting, that's all the talk at the moment. Uh, they obviously did not lower interest rates today, but its statement all but locked in the September rate cut. Now, to quote Fed Chair himself, uh, he said that a reduction in our policy rate could be on the table as soon as the next meeting in September. And I believe that we all know that that is very likely to be the case now. Now, as a result, stocks have rallied and the government bond yields have fallen after the Fed left the interest rate unchanged. And the Nasdaq finished the day 2.6% higher, followed by the S&P 500, which rose 1.6%. Now, Nadine, I also wanted to mention when we were on the other day, you mentioned and asked if there was a specific sort of support area for the ASX 200 to return to. And it was actually on that day on Thursday where it did pull back to that level of $7,890. And we have now seen that push back above so one thing i wanted to know and obviously we, we know that i'm i love my technical analysis here is that we did have that daily break in market structure which saw the actual stock push above the 8,000 level we've retraced into something called the discount level which is the lower 50 percent of the range tapped into that demand and we've since actually seen a consecutive break above where we had yesterday's candle closing above the previous high now what we're anticipating now is we don't know where the high is we could just rally a little bit further up before pulling back. But essentially, we are here expecting that we are going to see a pullback into discount of the range again, where we have a new fresh demand zone, which at that point, we'll need to assess whether that will hold to see the rally continue or whether that demand might break for us to fall back down into the range that we were stuck in prior. OK, Isaiah, I know that you love your technicals, but fundamentally, what will, in your view, be the determinant of whether we head higher or if we have sort of hit resistance already? Well, I guess that's what we need to wait and see on the 6th of August when we do have that RBA meeting. Um, as mentioned, we don't think that there will be a rate hike, but obviously even when we do reach the expectation of just maintaining rates, we'll just have to wait and see what occurs at that moment. But in terms of the market, Isaiah, particularly when you're at 8,100 on the ASX 200, and that sort of surpassed a lot of people's end of year forecasts, you know, there's so many things that could upend this rally. You've got reporting season about to kick off in earnest as well. Yes, correct. Well, that, that's definitely something that is going to affect it. We're also continuing to see that weaker demand out of China, which will obviously drive the commodity prices down. So we'll just have to be a, a sort of waiting game at the moment for us here. All right. Well, it's a pleasure to have you join us here on AusBiz as per usual. We'll see you soon. Thank you. 
Isaiah El Shabini joining us there from Macro Capital. I, I keep forgetting. Cheers to you. Oh, yes. Cheers. What a day. What a day. Um, we've got, we've got merch. merch. We've grown and up. Mine says, I wish my portfolio was this hot. Mine says, invest in a good brew. Thanks, Mike Payne. Thanks, Mike Payne. These are amazing. We love them. We're going to keep them. And uh, yeah, straight to the pool room, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Along with my Osbis drink bottle. All right, Lau, we talked about Drone Shield. Yeah. That was the stock of the day. We had Mark Gardner from MPC Markets on with uh, Koshi and also Daniel Ortizzi from Stock Doctor. Yeah, let's listen in. Overall, I think this is really good buying here at the moment because oh. um, I think the long-term prospects of this company are super solid. Um, and if it uh, so, one, so good, man, you've had a look at it. Good management team, good product. Yeah, and I think there will be a need for like, and it's and it's not a um, it's not an enormous, it's not a submarine or a, you know. Yep. I think where these got it's it's small spend for defence. Um, it, it still just looks a bit rich to me. There's one thing that people hate more than losing money and that is as mark has mentioned seeing other people make money so it can cause <laughs> that huge fomo effect the best thing you can do is if you don't know don't buy just stay out and wait because you're going to be prone to making a blunder so my view is look we don't know the business the industry well enough to be informed about the future value of this company let's just sit on the sidelines and watch the story the story play out So oftentimes, I shouldn't say often, but oftentimes we do have consensus amongst mm. our crew, but not there. So we had one buy and we had one hold. Um, just to sort of promo our website and some of our reporting season coverage again, Juliet, if you will uh, suffer me. Um, we, I put up a couple things today um, from our event that we held yesterday, our virtual investor event. So if you couldn't make that, shame on you. But <laughs> I just thought the content was so good. So Philip Pepe, a regular that you know yeah. well, and uh, Dean Fergie from Cyan Investment Management joined me first up to, to say where the bodies are buried, so to speak. So we know from experience in the newsroom that you go to the ASX website, everything's happening fast and furious. You often get a media release, then it's followed up by a presentation. So the two of them go through what they really look for, yeah. what they gloss over, and they also share the most important metrics in their view that any investor can sort of have their companies lined up, they can have their checklist, they can be already so that you you can if you want to trade reporting season if you want to get some of the upside um, that you can actually get involved and um, just because everybody's not a trader and we often hear you know let the market settle we get these whipsaw reactions to these report I followed it up with a segment with Adam Dawes from Sean yeah. Partners and Danny AQA from FN Arena who I'm sure you'll recognize and uh, they talk through uh, what they are expecting and what they would be looking for in a zip yeah, BHP drone and Drone Shield, shield yeah, as well. Exactly. So it's really worthwhile to just go to the website and look for the reporting season coverage. And there's so, I, I just, even, you know, I'm not saying even for me, but like I've been doing this for a long time and I thought, no, it's so good to get a refresher yeah. um, as to what Where we're looking for. Where the bodies for. are buried is a nicer way than I normally put how they <laughs> try to hide the bad news. Um, let's start with the small cap leaders and laggards today. We mentioned um, Drone Shield was there, but Kinetico Energy also um, up by 18%, Clearview Technology up 15 I did see a note come into our inbox from Clearview Technology. So it has got, well, it's been signing a lot of deals as of late, um, but it did, I believe, have one uh, in the United States. So anyways, it was off the back of a ASX announcement if you'd like to go take a look and brush up on your skills for, yeah. um, for reporting season. All right, let's have a look at the laggards in the small cap space today. Um, Legacy Iron Ore down 11%. Fluence not having a good day. And Air Tasker, which was not a bad one yesterday it was. as well. Yeah, down another 6.5%. Um, I'm not is too sure if there's something sort of bigger at play here because it too has got a lot of these contra deals for media exposure going on right now but no news today fluence corporation as well pretty pretty significant fall on no news down by 8.7 percent all right and to the leaders and laggards in the big caps um pilbara was a very big standout today i mean it was a lot about these uh players in the material sector in the energy space as we continue to watch oil adore beauty of course had a bit of a hit earlier in the week did it not when it had a new ceo yeah. appointed who will take over later in the year that interview is up online if you'd like to see it 
And it's now up 5%. Live360 Sandfire Resources is looking good too. Okay, and uh, flipping the page, Monadelphus, I know it was in the news today. It's off by a pretty chunky 5%. Came out to give a bit of an update on Albemarle terminating the Kemperton contracts. The termination is effective from September the 12th, so that's bad news for the company. Credit Corp in the wake of its report yesterday, giving back some of that ground that it did gain. And Red 5 has seen a production update yesterday result in a price target being cut by close to 4% by Ordmanet, and it finished down by 3.87%. All right, so what is on tonight? Now the Fed's out of the way. Well, it's about the Bank of England decision as well. Uh, also the preliminary non-farm productivity in the US and some big tech earnings. I mean, Apple, Amazon, Block are all going to be huge. That's what we will be talking about tomorrow morning. I should also flag that ResMed does report in the US through the overnight period. And we will be speaking with the MD, Mick Farrell, tomorrow morning. So we'll bring that interview to you sometime after 10 o'clock, I think, most mm. likely. And uh, we'll be asking about, you know, obviously the GLP-1 drugs, uh, demand, um, China, supply chains, operational um, efficiencies, all the all Well, the it'll usuals. be at least a year, if not more now, that they would have had the impact of that short selling um, from the weight loss yeah, drugs. Yeah, when we get um, these new sort of releases from any of those big drug companies, Eli Lilly, Novo Vardis, you know, if they do any sort of like the trial that comes through, remember mm. we've seen like sort of the, the pullback dips, repeatedly. Yeah. So it will be asking about that. Look, always we're open to putting questions to the CEOs on behalf of you, the shareholders. So you can always tweet to us and we'll um, take those on board. No promises, but we'll <laughs> take them on board most certainly. All right, and uh, looking ahead tomorrow, we've got PPI coming through, also some earnings from ResBed that we just mentioned, Block as well, so it's dual listed, and uh, PNI too. And what is the CSC June quarter I update? I zero clue. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I'm just sort of going to the ASX. It might not be out yet, but I know that Pinnacle, PNI, was going to be report after the market closed today. So 6.17, around about there here in Sydney. It's not out just yet. No. All right, well, <laughs> um, another good day on the market, up six tenths of 1% on the SIBO 200 there. And the ASX 200 is up four tenths of 1%, 8,127 points. So we'll take, we'll it. take that, thank you very much. So US tech tonight, big releases. And uh, we'll get you across all you need to know, not just about reporting season, but all the news and views that comes to this Aussie market. All right, we'll catch you from 9.45 Eastern. See you then.